Hey everybody, we want to welcome you to our special 100th episode of the podcast that we've been doing, Glory Now. I can't believe it's been going on for 100 episodes already. Y'all are in for a treat today. We are doing something completely different and I'm excited. I know Victoria's excited and uh, yeah, we're just going to jump right into it and see how this goes. (laughs) talking about today Victoria. So today we are talking about growing together which I'm really excited about to be hitting on today and you know we wanted to do it for Valentine's as a Valentine's Day special but unfortunately we weren't able to get it out the week of Valentine's Day so we're a little bit behind and I want to you know give a precursor to this too because when we're talking about growing together it's not only for you know a marriage relationship. It's for any type of relationship, whether it's uh, family members you're really close to. It's dealing with people that you see on a regular basis that you are very close to. And all the stuff we're going to talk about today will be re- really relevant from the body of Christ, the church family. You've got your home personal family. And it's also useful for marriage relationships. So it covers a lot of any type of relationship that has any form of intimacy in it or a relationship where you experience or encounter an individual pretty frequently. This will be very helpful for you. Well, and just the church, too. I mean, the whole concept of the church is God didn't call us to do anything by ourselves. And the Bible actually says that the devil seeks whom he may devour. He, he prowls around like a roaring lion. Well, a lion doesn't just go after the pack. It goes after the one that's straggling behind. You know, Paul, Paul told the church to hand someone over to Satan in Corinthians. And the context of what he meant by that was kick him out of the church. <laughs> And today people just leave the church for whatever. But it's interesting that the Bible calls just being kicked out of the church or leaving the church being handed over to Satan. (laughs) And so God called us to do this thing together. He called us to do everything together. And so it works in, because there's such a thing as a corporate anointing that can only really come when people are in absolute unity, seeking the Lord, they're hungry for God. And it's something that unfortunately in the modern American church, we don't see a whole lot. And we're getting to a point where we're beginning to see that, which is exciting. Yeah, that's <laughs> you see really it true. cross-denominationally, people who are just hungry for God, who are hungry for His presence and hungry for an outpouring of His Spirit. And so it's important to be able to grow together because there's God didn't design us to be able to grow alone. Exactly. <laughs> we can't. We have to do that. And you know, like other. the Bible says, iron sharpens <laughs> iron. So we've yeah. got to be able to be together. We've got to have communion with each other. We've got to have fellowship with each other. And a lot of times, you know, what we, what people will try to do, especially within the last couple of years, is they isolate themselves. So if an individual is hard for them to deal with or an individual pushes their buttons, rather than trying to learn to grow together, it's like, oh, well, I'm just going to have nothing to do with them anymore. And they begin to isolate themselves. Oh, I get, you know, I can't get along with people at church, so I'm not going to go to church anymore. Or I can't get along with these family members, so I'm never going to see these family members anymore. And it, it's like a continual thing where we try to separate ourselves and isolate ourselves rather than trying to learn, okay, how can we both grow together? And you know, that's the important thing we've got to understand is that nobody's perfect. <laughs> you know, we're all growing. We're all learning. We're all developing continually. And, you know, different people may have different areas that they're very strong in and other areas that they're like, oh, hey, this might be a problem. And we've got to learn to recognize our own faults, you know, and recognize other people's faults. So then we can say, okay, I know this is something they're struggling with. How can we grow together How can we help develop each other? How can we help encourage each other rather than just cutting them off then and there, you know? Yeah, that's so important. That's so important. And and that's something that, that needs to become so important in the church. And that's, I think that's what we've been seeking to do with the connect group that we've been working on is to get to the point where people have a community that they can grow in. Mm -hmm. People can have the iron that sharpens iron. People can have, they can come into a church and they can get connected with people and they can build relationships with people. And it's interesting that the only way, there are some things that you can only grow in 
by having that interaction with somebody It's so else. true, <laughs> though, because if you never have that interaction, you're yeah. like, oh, I didn't even realize I was that way, or is that really a problem? You know, like when Caleb and I, this is an example, you know, first got married, you start realizing things about the other yeah. person, you're like, or about yourself, you know, somebody will say something or point something out, and you're like, oh, man, I didn't even realize that that was an issue. I didn't even know I was like that, you know. <laughs> or you'll see things, because when you're in a relationship with somebody, they'll do things that just annoy you or push your buttons or test your patience. And then you can learn to recognize that thing and say, oh, hey, wait a minute. Like, there's something that I need to change or, yeah, or there's something that we need to work on or how do we address this? <laughs> yeah, how many times do you, do you interact with somebody and you're all of a sudden you realize that thing about them that bothers you so much it's like a light bulb goes like, <laughs> that's a me problem <laughs> that is a me problem that is, that is not a them problem <laughs> yeah. like a hundred percent and it's the, the other thing that's important to know ab about growing together is that <clears throat> the the way that we grow in christ we mature in christ mm -hmm. so you can look at the finished work of the cross jesus already did and provided everything that we will ever need but we have to actually, the Bible talks about working out your salvation, mm -hmm. where you actually have to be renewed in your mind and you grow by that. You're transformed more and more like Jesus by renewing your mind. And sometimes that renewing of your mind is not just what you're thinking, but the way that you're thinking and the way that you're acting. And sometimes you don't realize you're thinking and acting that way until you get around other people yeah. and they start pointing it out. <laughs> and this is a good and bad thing. This is like a double-edged sword because it depends on, that's why it's important to surround yourself around good people. The Bible talks about when you walk in the counsel of the wise, you will be wise, but the companion of fools is destroyed. It talks about in Proverbs, it warns us over and over and over again about that because a basic human fundamental principle and relationship is reciprocal, reciprocal relationships. Relationships are typically built in a human sense off of what do you offer me and what can I offer you? And it's kind of a sad, selfish thing. You know, you can see that with Job. When Job lost everything he had, what happened? His friends tried to come around him and tried to like, the, the, here's all the reasons why this is happening to you. You know, you should just repent and, and, and you know, turn from your sin. And his wife said, why don't you just curse God and die? You know, his own wife, his own wife turned on him the moment that, that the devil was attacking him. Mm -hmm. And that he lost everything. Yeah. He didn't have anything anymore. And since he didn't have anything, he couldn't share that reciprocal aspect of the relationship. And that's what's supposed to separate the church from the rest of the world is that there is a level of relationship and companionship that you have in church, in a body of believers, that goes beyond reciprocation, mm -hmm. where you are laying your life down for each other. And, it, and obviously that's supposed to be something, the way that God really designed this thing is that you are practicing that selfless relationship in family <laughs> and in marriage. And then when you come to church, it's an extension of how God is maturing you and growing you in that relationship. And obviously not everybody is married. And the Bible even speaks to that too, that if Paul said, if you're married, you shouldn't seek a spouse. And if you're, uh, or if you're not married, you shouldn't seek a spouse. And if you are married, then why, you know, don't seek to not be married. <laughs> like, yeah. whatever you are, be happy with what you are. <laughs> and so the Lord will come and make a way with you. But the point is not whether you're married or not married. There's a body of believers that we need to begin to step beyond. That's what working out your own salvation is doing. You're, you're reminding yourself all the time of what Jesus did for you so that you can have that grace and that same love for people. And then also realize that when you go into the world that people don't care. <laughs> they don't care about you. Yeah, nope. <laughs> like you have family relationships that, yes, you know, it's like people will fight and they hate each other and they'll feud and then, oh, but they're family, you know, and it's kind of this goofy thing. But still, in a sense, you, th there can be things that you're into. There can be things that you're interested in, things that you're passionate about that you could talk to people about and they just, they just will not care. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing you can do about it. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. And that's why it's so important why I was talking about who you surround yourself with is because if you're surrounded with a bunch of yahoos. <laughs> You'll become then, a yahoo. <laughs> exactly. Then there, the reason why reciprocation is important in relationships is because it tells you what is socially acceptable and unacceptable. Mm -hmm. You know, 
if you're in a situation and you start bad mouthing somebody and that group of friends starts kind of like this is not okay you need to quit acting that way you need to stop that's a good thing you know yeah. that's something that's supposed to be there in relationship and so that's why you have to make sure you're surrounding yourself with the right people who have the right biblical godly morals and who are putting the lord first mm-hmm. That's very important. And same thing, you know, talking about working out our salvation, work. It says work out your salvation. That means we have to work at it. We have to try at it. A lot of times we like the immediate, easy, simple fix. You know, like, God, I want to have your love immediately. And then for the rest of our life, we just walk in like a crazy love for individuals where nothing bothers us or anything like that. And it's like, no, we have to work out of it. You know, even with relationships, any type of relationship in your life. But the church, you have to work at the church. It's important to serve at the church. It's important to lay down your life. You know, so a lot of people will come to church thinking, me, 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 I, 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 I want to get what I want out of this service. And if I don't get what I think I should get, then I'm not going to come back. Rather than saying, hey, I'm coming to church because I want to help and work and serve in the house of God. I want to receive from God. I want to help my brethren, my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. And I'm going to lay, I'm going to work towards these things, you know, serving in areas of volunteering in different areas of the church, you know, doing all those type of things. Because when you begin to serve other people, it allows you to learn to grow. It allows you it to grow your character. It allows you to develop the spiritual fruits that are supposed to be, you know, that we're supposed to be giving. So it's really important that we do that. And keep in mind, it's going to take work. It's not going to be always, you know, rainbows and butterflies <laughs> every single and day. And this is why it's important to do it together too, because how do you get from that point of this is all about me to I'm coming here to serve? Because some people, they come they come through these doors on Sunday mornings and the reason it's all about them is because their life sucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like they're going through hell and they need, need to be some set help. free and they need help or, or people might come and they're demonized and, and it's hard to think about the future and it's hard to think about other people when you are so burdened down yourself. Mm-hmm. And so that's why as much as as much as we want to, we want to move to that place where we're helping each other. But then the great thing about that is that help is there for us. Yes, so that's very true. So then you can go true. from a place of like, it's impossible to think about ever helping anyone else because like your family's in turmoil, your life is falling apart, you're out of, you know, work or health problem or different things like that. That That's why the church is here is to minister to those needs and to help put people on that track because, you know, it's, it's people don't dream if they're broke. Mm-hmm. They're just trying to make survive. the bills. They're just, <laughs> yeah, they're just trying to survive. And it's, it's hard to get vision from God and to look into what he has for you in your life when you're just trying to survive. <laughs> and that's why it's important for those who have matured to get to this point where you're not just coming to church looking at what you can get out of it, like Victoria was talking about. And, and it's funny because you'd almost think that this is just like a sales pitch to come to our church. No, it's, it's not that. It was, we're just genuinely, that's how it is. Like, we're just passionate about, we've, we've received from the fruit of what it means to be transformed in a church body, in a community of believers, and to be able to rely and depend on on each each other. other. And it's something that's so real to us that I just wish everybody would begin to get. And I think people are starting to get that, especially now in America. There's been like a clear separation of who the church is and who the church isn't. Yeah. You know, the social games, the the nice inspirational message, and the church, you know, like... So people are hungry. People are are looking for that real, you know, Mm -hmm. and keep doing that. You know, and another important part about working out our salvation in Philippians, it says uh, to work out his work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to the will and work for his good pleasure. So we, you know, we got to take a lot out of that. It says a whole lot about working out our salvation. You know, the first thing that we talked about is it takes work. The next important part is with fear and trembling. Well, what does that mean? That means in reverence, in awe and fear of who God is to say, God, you died on the cross for me. You gave me this salvation to set me free. And I'm going to do everything I possibly can to live righteously, to live right, to live according to your word. 
and to change how I need to change, to work it out with fear and trembling, with an awe, with a reverence, with saying like, I don't like so far, you know, like the, the Bible says, you know, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil so that you hate evil. Not that, you know, cause some, sometimes when we, we first become saved and we first start working out, you know, working in areas of our life, you know, we, we can say, well, well, this is really hard. Or sometimes we can get discouraged and we feel like, well, I just can't do this. You know, but we, when we become to have a develop a relationship with God, it says that for it is God who works in you. So we can understand that God is doing a work in you. So when you start feeling it's hard, when you start feeling like I can't do this, remind yourself, hey, it's not just me. God is doing a work in me. I can rely on him. I can rely on his Holy Spirit to help me walk right. And he will. He'll bring reminders to you. You know, and if you, like Caleb said, if you surround yourself with good people, good, good individuals who can encourage you, who set the right example, for you. They can also help encourage you and push you and keep you on the right track. But you know, also an important thing that comes with fear and trembling is humility. And that's a big key too when it comes to working out our salvation is to make sure that we have humility of heart, that we really take a good look at ourselves and say, hey, where do I need to change? You know, because if correction needs to be made or if there's areas where we need to grow in and we can have a good mentor or somebody in our life who's encouraging us and saying, hey, look, this might be a problem. You might not want to do this, but you're, you don't have that humility. It'll be like, well, I don't want to listen to you. Don't, who do you think you are? Tell Once, me this and, and this and this. And here's another test of humility too. Sometimes that does not come through a mentor. That sometimes is the you're issue. Sometimes you're like, what the heck are you talking about? And then you're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking, you're like, crap. <laughs> like that person was right. That is very true. <laughs> you know, whether, like, there, I mean, there's been times we talk about that we'll talk about something, and that's why it's relationship is so important, and especially that's why there's something so beautiful in marriage, where you can grow in ways that you never thought you would possibly be able to grow, mm-hmm. <laughs> and especially ways you didn't even think was was an issue. Yeah. <laughs> so, like like a great example was, uh, lately the Lord has been leading me. Um, to write and I don't know if that's going to be a book he hadn't told me exactly what to write but the 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 reason I know I need to write is because I know that my grammar is horrible (laughs) so so (laughs) writing improves everything in your life with communication not just like to go and write a book And, and that could happen but so I was putting that off and putting that off, and putting that off, thinking like, ah, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. And so I had written something and I had Victoria read it. And she's like, yeah, the concepts in here are good, but the grammar is terrible. <laughs> and I was just like, I was just like, poof. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm like, my grammar is not that bad. It's not, th- I'm not that bad. I went through school. Like I know how to at least read and write a little bit. And then I go through and I put Grammarly on there, which is like a free correction program to show you like the problems. And it had so many issues that I ran out of free corrections. Like, yeah, it's like, like you need it's to like, upgrade you, to actually yeah. have. <laughs> it's like, and so here's the thing that's beautiful about relationships is here was something that the Lord was really speaking to me about. You need to get better about this. You need to improve at this. You need to learn about this. And then the moment you realize there's resources everywhere, like Pastor Paul has like eight books just on grammar that's in the office here that I've I've been looking through and there's free resources or resources online and everything like that but it was important enough to of uh, for of how do I say it? it was important enough that God was trying to get that through to me that I wouldn't have been able to just get that myself because the Lord had been working on me about that for like a long time (laughs) to start doing that. And so that I wasn't, we weren't like trying to like have like a spirit, like I just feel my spirit, Victoria, what do you feel about this? And and this and this and this, I wasn't meeting with a mentor. I wasn't doing anything like that. It was just like, you know, (laughs) your grammar sucks. What? <laughs> <You know? laughs> you know, it's like, well, your grammar sucks. <laughs> what are you talking to me? <laughs> you know, and then you sit and you think about it. And so, like, it, it, that will happen a lot in marriage relationships and close relationships and friendships and church relationships. But there'll be times, if you're a humble person, that you can receive correction from anyone anywhere. Mm-hmm. If it's a genuine correction, <laughs> even if it's done in a prideful spirit, which that, not that that was, I'm not saying that that was. I'm just but, very blunt. Yeah, Victoria's very honest. <laughs> she, 
She has no ability to <laughs> uh, hint at anything. I, 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 just, <laughs> I yeah. just tell it as it is. Anybody who's been through Leadership Academy knows what I'm talking about. And sometimes <laughs> it comes across harsh. I don't mean it harsh. I'm just, it's just very honest. <laughs> I'm learning. And that's where Caleb helps me. <laughs> so see how it helps each other. Because he'll help me. He'll be like, hey, you know, Victoria, this is something you say it this way, but it comes across really hard. How about you just rechange how you deliver it and make it, you could still say, you know, get across the same thing you're trying to get across. But if you just change some of the words here, change how you deliver it, it'll be received better. So then he helps me grow and understand, oh, how can I better communicate to people so that, you know, instead of just crushing their dreams accidentally, <laughs> you know, like he's trying, oh, you're a terrible writer, <laughs> or you're terrible at grammar, not terrible writer, but terrible at grammar, you know, she's saying, hey, you know, you're really good at this. You might want to consider, you know, looking a bit better at the grammar. You could change a few things and learn to grow there, you know, just how you say things. So well, it's important to the... It's important to have honest people that you can have honest conversations with like that. Yeah. Because if we couldn't be honest about that, how would we ever get to get to that? To grow. You know? and, and the Bible says, the Bible talks about how to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. That's why humility is so important because when you have like sometimes offense and opportunity for offense is the thing that's going to keep you from growing. Mm -hmm. And that's why offense is so important to be able to get over, which we don't even have in our notes to really talk about. But that's such an important that's such an important thing because oftentimes the moment you get over an offense, that's the thing the Lord was trying to get you free from and into. Yeah. <clears throat> and so to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Every when you're when you're humble and you're hungry for the Lord, when correction comes, you're receptive. And now sometimes you have to like, here's, here's where it gets tricky is when, if, when you start growing and you start maturing, there's this temptation to always be correcting yourself all the time and always growing and all. And here's why that's a temptation is because our selfishness doesn't want to see ourselves imperfect. Mm. And that's why it says in James 4, 6, that he gives more grace. Therefore, it says God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. And that's why it's important to be humble. <clears throat> because if you're just trying to correct your own life, <laughs> then that's that can take on also another form of pride because it's like you just don't want to see yourself with flaws. You just don't want to see yourself imperfect. And so you're always correcting, always correcting, always making changes, always making changes. And it's a good thing to do that. But let the Lord be the one that's leading that. Otherwise, you start getting, you're like your conscience is like overactive and you start having problems where you're condemning yourself all the time and beating yourself up all the time and you hold yourself to such a high unreasonable standard that it's impossible to actually grow because everything in your life is a problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's not a problem. <laughs> it's just the way you think about it's a problem. So that's why we have to let the grace of God, it's God who works in you. So we don't work it ourselves. We receive the grace and we by faith move in that grace. Mm -hmm. And that's what our part is. And what's so cool too is about the grace, which is why I love God so much. Because sometimes, you know, the Bible says when, when correction comes, it can hurt, you know. It talks about it in Proverbs, about it's bitter, but then they're thankful and glad for the fruit thereafter that it brings. Yeah, you know? Hebrews talks about that, that it brings the peaceable piece fruit of, of righteousness. Uh, exactly. But it's not pleasant at the time. <laughs> at the time. <laughs> no discipline is pleasant <laughs> at, at the, the time. time. So when it comes and correction comes, you know, it's not going to be pleasant. But that's the same way we, why the grace is so important. Because there's been so many times where you'll receive correction or where God will correct you through his Holy Spirit or through his word and you hear it and you receive it and then you're like oh because he brings this like comfort yeah. he brings this comfort to you afterward through his spirit that grace like hey I know you messed up like bam this was wrong but here's the grace here's comfort here's saying it's it's going to be okay like you're still going to get over this you're not going to stay the same so that way we can we can grow we don't just get in this like stuck like hopeless stuck feeling or this depressed or in self-condemnation like I can never be good enough but it's a continual walk it's continual growth and when we have that humility we are accompanied with that grace you know and that's and what psalms 25 9 says he leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way that's exactly what I yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's cool because that's it's 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 so important to be humble mm -hmm. and to seek humility instead of just trying and sometimes that that's the other form of pride that pride can take is i'm a no good nothing mm -hmm. because you know you're not the the Lord Jesus Christ 
died on the cross for you so that according to 2 Corinthians, I believe it's 521, you could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. So you're very, so you're, very <laughs> important. So it's actually pride to refuse that. It is. And it's on you know, having an honest look at yourself, an honest evaluation of yourself and saying, you know, as David said, search me, God, you know, search my heart. And if there be anything inside of me, any wicked waves inside of me that you take it out, that you cleanse it, that you show me, you know, and, and look at that and say, God, search me, you know. And then when you do pray that prayer and then correction comes or somebody goes and say something, you know, be like, be humble enough to say, oh, OK, I'm praying it. <laughs> I got I to gotta walk it out, you know, in my life. But it's so important. And God will teach the humble. And that's how we can grow and work out our salvation. I want to make an important point here is the Bible says it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance, yeah. which is why when the Lord corrects us, it's sweet. That's really it's true. like, boom. You're my son. <laughs> you know, like this, quit this, but I love you. And, then, and I've noticed in my life too, anytime I feel the Lord correcting me, there always comes an instruction. He doesn't just pull your legs out from under you so that you just, you know, yeah. fall and you have nothing to stand on. It's like, don't do this, do this instead. And he'll give you something and else. To it's also important on. to know that God corrects with his word. He corrects with his word. You know, people can go through, community is important, but that's why it's important who you surround yourself with because God corrects through his word, not through experiences. Mm -hmm. People people will pridefully boast about having been through the school of hard knocks. And it's like, fine, if you want to go through that, go ahead. I'm just going to read the Bible and do what it says. And then you and don't I'm have to be go safe through the school of hard knocks. Because <laughs> you know? typically the, what will happen is scripture will pop out to you. Correction is there. You feel it from the word. The Holy Spirit starts speaking to you about it. You can't get away from it. And then if you're really still ignoring it, people will start coming to you. It'll come up. It, you know, conversation will happen. And then if you really keep ig in ignoring it, that's when you start going through things. Because the problem that you're going through in your life that the Lord's trying to actually get out of you is what's producing the problems in your life. Mm -hmm. It's not that the Lord sends problems to, to like... You know, you know, like that. My my son needs patience today. Let me fill the roads with traffic. You know, yeah. no, it's that you don't have patience, and the Lord's working on that. And so, any traffic is unbearable <laughs> because, <laughs> because you don't things, have patience. Those things are going to be there <laughs> whether you like it or not. And so, it's that grace of God that does the work in us that lets us be able to actually handle the obstacles that otherwise would have been debilitating to us. That's really good. And then you can overcome things in your life and walk in victory because you've developed and grown and matured in that area that he's been able to work out in you. And that's why if you're selfish, <laughs> you are your own problem, okay? <laughs> like there are so many times that people have problems and it's like, yeah, that's a you problem. Like, <laughs> and and I don't, I don't mean that to sound like, and like, I'm not going to help you at all. But you can't help somebody who is just self-absorbed and so selfish because they're not humble. Mm -hmm. And they don't not see humble. it. They don't see and the unfortunately, problem. Unfortunately, a lot of times people who are selfish, they don't see the problem. They vindicate, well, this, I did this, I did this, I did this. Or it's not my fault. It's somebody else's fault because this and this and this and this. Yeah. And yeah, you know, people can treat you bad. This is something I always tell, I tell my after school care kids all the time because you know, their kids, they'd run up and some kid would do something to them and they'd want to like punch him back or do something like that, you know, or, or start screaming and hollering and yelling. And I always tell them, I say, look, you can't control what other people do, but you can control how you respond. And that's so important that we reflect on and look on, you know. So even if somebody does something to you, you know, you, you can control how you respond to that action. Am I going to hold on to anger? Am I going to hold on to bitterness? Am I going to go after revenge? Am I going to take this situation and use it as a crutch for why I can't do things or use it as a crutch as to why I can't move forward? Or am I, am I going to acknowledge it, say, hey, this happened. Yeah, it was a problem, but I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to grow from it and I'm going to become a better person through it. Because, I mean, if you sit and think about anything long enough, you can find excuses for why it's not your fault. Yeah, Every time. <laughs> we're you'll very find, good at that. You'll convince yourself, <laughs> we, you know, we, we tend to always judge other people by their actions, but we only judge ourselves by our intentions. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> that's a that's a dangerous thing because you want to make sure that radical responsibility taking is gospel. 
The Lord said, yeah. pick up, up your, your cross. cross. Pick up your cross. It's not about what crosses other people are carrying. It's not about what other people are doing. It's If you can learn in life to take the most responsibility possible over everything that you control, it will do you good because that's a faithful steward. A faithful steward isn't someone who just lets life dictate to them everything that goes on in their life. Mm -hmm. You have to actually take control of your life. You know, write a schedule, <laughs> you know, yeah. like make to-do lists, like set goals. set goals, like take control of your life. Don't just let like some people, they spend their whole life running around doing things out of uh, necessities of other people mm -hmm. or like th this is going on. And that's why it's important to, to have community because we can help bear one another's burden because we want to be able to actually like because if you can't take control of your life and start moving it where it's supposed to be going, you won't fulfill what God's called you to do. Mm -hmm. Because if he's called you to do something, but you're too busy dealing with all the chaos in your life, <laughs> how are you going to get to the point where you're actually able to do what he's called and you to do? And that's why he came. That's why he sent Jesus. Yeah. And that's why he has the gospel. That's why he has his words. That's why he has his commandments so that we can be free from all those distractions, free from all the stuff that would keep you and would stop you from being able to present the gospel, to tell people about Christ, to walk in the gifts of the spirit and the fruits of the spirit and to be a proper example and a great disciple for Christ Jesus. So so he wants us to be free from all those things. He wants us to grow from all those things. He doesn't want us to stay a spiritual babe anymore. You know, he wants us to grow and to mature. Because it's good growing. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, <laughs> there is nothing more liberating than on the other side of realizing you were selfish. Because <laughs> in the moment, you're just stuck in bondage and life is miserable and everything sucks. <laughs> but then you realize, oh, I'm selfish. And then that part of you dies. You're like, oh, I feel so free. It's so free. I feel and then, so free. <laughs> and then you just see it everywhere. Yeah. Like in yourself, everywhere, every yeah. aspect of your life yeah. or if other people or whatever, like you just see it everywhere. And then you're like, oh. And then once you recognize it, you learn like, I don't want to be anything like that anymore, you know, and you want to change. So it's really good, you know, and, and growing takes action. We've got to make sure we take action. Like, you, you know, speak it, speak it, but <clears throat> plan to walk it out. Like say, hey, I'm going to work, you know, if the Holy Spirit points out one thing, you know, and, and don't get overwhelmed because a lot of times we want to try to fix everything at once. Too. Yeah, we were talking about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, earlier, but just take it step by step. Yeah. And this, it's, this is important because you determine your life. Mm -hmm. Some people just think whatever comes into their life is God's will. That's not true. You actually determine your life. You determine if you fulfill what God's called you to do or not. And that can be a hard truth for many people because they, it's always like, well, if this is going on, then it must have been the Lord's will. And if this happened, it must have been the Lord's will. It's like the Lord's will is in his word and you determine the level to which you fulfill his word and that you obey his word. Our relationship with God is not up to God. <laughs> yeah. He's already done everything, everything to make relationship with us. It's up to us. How hungry are we? How much are we going to press into him? How much are we going to allow him to change and transform us? You know? So if you're selfish, you are typically your own problem. And selfishness will always destroy relationships. It does. It, it always, always destroys always relationships. Always destroys relationships. And, and it, it's a form of yeah. pride, you know? And, and that's something I want to get into. You know, all sin has roots in selfishness. All sin. Lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the lust of the eyes. All has root in self. So that's why we need to crucify the flesh and lay it down and grow it. And, you know, we're setting up this because we want you guys to understand that when it comes to growing together, people and both sides have to be willing yeah. to grow have to be willing to change, have to be willing to do that. And if the other person is not interested in it, it's very, very hard. You can't, you can't really grow together. Now, here's what's interesting, though, in marriage is <laughs> if one person is willing to fulfill what the Word of God says, then you can actually win that other person over. Yeah, the Bible that's talks something about that's un that. That's unique in marriage it, that the Bible talks about. And... This is important too because we, a lot of, you know, people are hungry for re revival. People are hungry for an outpouring of the move of God. People are hungry for the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. But there's a tendency to hunger after those manifestations 
and neglect relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And so there's people who will chase signs and wonders all over, and that's all they're after. You know, like the Bible says that Israel knew the works of God, but Moses knew God's ways. Mm -hmm. And who saw more supernatural manifestations, Israel Moses. or Moses? <laughs> It was Moses because he knew God because he was concerned primarily about if your presence doesn't go with us, then we're not moving. Mm -hmm. We're not moving. And that's something that we've got to we've got to be very aware of in ourselves because <laughs> it's all fun and amazing when God is moving and his spirit's moving. And that's that's the thing that's so good about God is because when you get hit by the power of the Holy Ghost and you have what we call <laughs> floor time, <laughs> you have some time where you're just like inebriated in his presence. Stuff will change yeah, in your life. It, you can't. Your you life can't, will you transform. You have encounter with God and it not change. <laughs> and so I don't want you to think that like, <laughs> you know, it's it's not just all like kill the flesh, ah, you know, like <laughs> all the time. It's actually about getting to the point where you're enjoying the presence of and God and you're just you're enjoying relationship so with in God. love with God yeah. that you don't want to do any of the other stuff. You're so in love that God that when he speaks to you and says, hey, work on this, you're like, yes, sir, I'm going to do it. Or yes, sir, help me do this. Or, you know, teach me how to walk yeah. better because you're just so in love with him and it becomes a joy. It becomes something like, like Moses. He said, I don't want to do anything unless you're with me, God. Yeah. I'm not going to go like you can promise me this promised land but I will not go to that promised land unless you are with me the whole way and the whole trip there you know why because he loved God he loved being in the presence of God and when we develop that same thing when it's not you know what can I get from God how's this how's this was like God I just love you I love your presence I want to live for you for no other reason because he loves me and I love him and the proof that that's genuine is that you love one another that's what Jesus said. By this will the world know that you're my disciples because of your love for one another. <laughs> so the, sometimes it's so funny. Some some people who shake, rattle, and roll the most <laughs> during a Holy Ghost service are the meanest, nastiest people. <laughs> <laughs> because it's not genuine. Mm -hmm. It's not genuine. There, people can have all different types of counterfeits for the real. Mm -hmm. They can. They can. People can run around. People can jump. People can dance. People can shout. People can wave flags and dance and and you know, do all this crazy stuff. But there has to be a genuine. When when it's genuine, you don't care who's watching. Mm -hmm. And it's not about who's watching. And it's not about what happens. Mm -hmm. It's about who you're interacting with. Yeah. And then the proof of that is that when you go out for that, now that might be, it might be difficult. You might have to put that to work. But there is a supernatural love of God that when you begin to receive his love, will love through you. Yeah, and you can have a supernatural love for people and, and walk out towards people, which makes it easier to help and serve yeah. people. And that's and how church grow. community should be. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible talks in Psalms uh, 133, it says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments, the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Mm -hmm. So when, when we're in unity, when we're a church that's in unity, that comes together and it's like we are all after the same thing. We want relationship with God. And that spills over into our relationships with each other. Then the anointing's going to flow. Yeah. <laughs> the anointing's going to flow. And so it's important to understand that, that these, aren't, these aren't separate issues. Exactly. It, these, works, it all work works together. together. Yeah. It all works together. You know, and a thing to, to, to move into understand is once, once we laid the groundwork for, you know, we working on ourselves, something else when it comes to growing together, especially if you're in family relationships or people you've known for a really long time, is that conditioned behavior can create conditioned responses. And we've got to, you know, make sure that we allow room for individuals to grow. Because sometimes, you know, we, we can, especially if you're in a relationship that's closer, you, you see this person all the time, they, they may have had past habits, you know, before they were saved, or, you know, me, maybe they, they were just newly saved and they're beginning to work out the salvation in their life, they're beginning to grow, they're beginning to make changes in different things, you know, but a lot of times we can become used 
or conditioned to a particular behavior of an individual. So then when that behavior, when that individual begins to work on changing, you know, we expect that same behavior from them. And that can be detrimental and make it even harder for that individual to grow. And it can stunt the growth. It can, it can make, you know, may, sometimes it may even discourage them. They might get to the point, well, what's the point of even trying to change if you just expect me to do this anyway? Yeah. Kind of thing, you yeah, know? Yeah, notice some, fam- <laughs> some families, the, the m- moment they're going through the most growth they've ever went through is when they feel they're growing the least because they're always fighting all the time <laughs> because, there's, because they're, they're expecting these things from each other and it's frustrating when you're growing and other people around you they don't believe it yes. and they're expecting something they're expecting an old behavior to be what they get out of you because <laughs> then you're like well why should I even bother then you know like <laughs> and it can get really discouraging you know like here's an example that that gives a good example of this is Call it like, let's say you, you know, you're, you're living with somebody and their favorite thing to do is like to jump out of corners and scare you. And they do this every day. And it doesn't matter what you're doing. You know, you, you come out, you come home, bam, they jump out and they scare you. Or you're, you're driving in your car, they're hiding in your back seat and they jump out and scare you. You know, but they do this every day, all different types of things. And then finally, you know, you, 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 you tell them over and over. And you say, hey, look, this really bothers me. Hey, look, this really bothers me. Hey, look, this really bothers me. And then finally, this individual, you know, cha- begins to say, hey, you know what? this really bothers or this really upsets my, you know, when I jump out and scare them, they don't like it anymore. So, so they, they generally want to start changing. So they start working to know, you know, Hey, you know, I'm not going to try to jump out and scare them anymore. You know, but what can happen? Well, let's say you're in the kitchen one day, mind your own business, and they just walk through the house minding their own business, and you didn't know they were there, and you turn around and they scare you. You know, it's not like they were trying to, they had no intention to, it was, it was just how that situation was perceived. And then because you had been so conditioned to the previous behavior, your immediate re- reaction is, well, you did this on purpose. I can't believe you, you were supposed to change. You told me you've been, you're changing. It's been one week since you scared me, and you had to come out do it today you're not even changing you're not even trying and you do all that stuff that person didn't even like it wasn't in their heart it wasn't their intention it wasn't their motivation so that'll really discourage them and that'll make them feel like well well I'm not trying to and then they'll tell you well I didn't try to scare you I didn't mean to and then you're like oh well you're just lying because you always scare me you know so so that's really what will happen in a lot of relationships and it hurts the process of growing because you're not giving room you're not giving allowance you're not giving grace for that individual to grow with us. You know, Ephesians 4 too, it says, With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. So we've got to have humility, gentleness, patience, and bearing with one another in love. That's how we give room. That's how we give space for an individual to grow. This is something that goes on all over society, yeah. all over society. You see this in every single sphere of society is people have a bad experience with a certain person or a certain people group or an organization or a business or a company and then they, all of a sudden, all capitalists are evil, all businessmen are evil, all men are evil, all women are evil. And people, you, it's it doesn't justify other people's wrong behavior, but don't let past experiences dictate your future expectations. Mm-hmm. You know, you see this with people in particular who have been single for a prolonged period of time. They <laughs> there's some people that the you know could it be the reason that they're single for so long is because the problems that they will not change keep coming up in every relationship. That's a possibility where they just will not make that correction and so relationships don't work. The other possibility is they're going to the wrong places, hanging around the wrong people, and the people they are choosing to have relationships are people who are not quality relationship material, you know? <laughs> like I saw this video, I saw this video where this girl called in, or this lady called in and she's asking advice from, from this guy on the show or whatever. What do I do? Like I have this child and and da da da, da. And, and they're talking through this problem that she's having and it turns out that the the uh, 
father of her child is a felon who's back in jail. And then the person she was in a relationship with was abusive. And so this woman was calling on just hating. I, I just, I don't know what to do. Men are just this, men are that, men are this. And he's like, hold on. You want to call on this show and start running down men because you make bad decisions? You had a child with a felon and then you marry someone who's an alcoholic and an abuser. Like, and he started going through the list of relationships. And so <laughs> it's, that's why it's important to be in church. So you get around the right people. And so what will happen is people will get hurt. People will have problems. And then they just then take their past experience and blanket it over everyone in the future. You see that with the younger generation right now that that is convinced that businessmen is a, a successful businessman who has money is an archetypical villain. Mm -hmm. They are the problem with society. It's people who have money. And actually they're the ones who are actually the ones who have the solutions for society. Now there is ill-gotten gain. That's another that's another issue. But the majority of people out there who have worked hard and been successful and have money, they haven't done it in illegal ways. Just <laughs> you work know? really, they, really they, hard. Yeah, when you work 18 hours a day, you're going to be successful in what you're working at, unless what you're working at is something that's not even worth pursuing. You know, which after a couple of weeks of 18 hours a day, you should be able to learn whether or <laughs> yeah, not that's like, going to it or not. You know? But the, that's a problem that you see in society over and over and over again is we begin to make generalizations about people groups or enterprises or whatever. And this is something that's really crazy. And this is why it's so important because it's almost like in a marriage relationship that this is a microcosm of expectations. Yes. And so that's, that's why it's so important to... Like marriage is such a good thing and those cl close relationships are such a good thing because that's like a microcosm of what then goes into society. Mm -hmm. And so something you can see in history is this thing that happened called the deculacization. And I'm probably not saying that right. It was when, uh, and I'm not trying to get political with any of this because honestly on politics, like... <laughs> there's people on both sides that need to just like repent and come repent to Jesus. Repent and come to Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I am more than ever before. I am on neither side of the political arena. I just want Jesus. And if you're a liar, I want you to tell the truth and quit lying. <laughs> and so, so this is just in history where I believe it was in the Soviet Union where what, what happened was they started this uh, propaganda campaign that started, and you can go and read about this online. Mm -hmm. They they started this propaganda campaign that the farmers or the kulaks, they were wealthy because they got all of their wealth from you, and you need to go and trample over the kulaks and uh, get back wealth, get back what they stole from you, <laughs> and so these wealthy farmers which wealthy in the Soviet Union by that standard was really not even wealthy. It's just these people weren't struggling, you know, in the same way. They, they were, once they acted on this, they attacked the kulags, they burned down their farms, they, they committed atrocities against these people, and as a result of killing all the farmers... <laughs> there was a famine, <laughs> there was no food. <laughs> they cut the supply chain off and... I don't remember the exact amount of numbers because it's been so long since I read about this, but lots and lots and lots of people died of starvation. <laughs> Excuse me. And so you see that this is something that goes across the board in society as a whole. And this is why we have to take responsibility for ourselves and do our part and, and, you know, bear one another's burden. And this is why the church is so important, because when you have a church body that God's not a respecter of persons, that it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, it doesn't matter what color you are, it doesn't matter what gender you are, you come into the church and you can have a relationship with God and you can be set free from sin and you can <laughs> serve God with all your heart and then grow together in unity. That's the thing that changes society. It, is. it doesn't matter what's wrong in politics. What are we going to do to change that? <laughs> you know, give ourselves to the belly of the beast. No, we fulfill what God's called us to do. And that changes the world. Yeah. The only way that we can change the world is by fulfilling the call of God that's on our lives. Mm -hmm. And the call of God on our lives is not just us. 
it's a call of God. If you're planted in a church, God's called you to that church. Yes. And if he hasn't called you to that church, go where he's called you. Yeah, pray <laughs> you don't pick a church seeking. like you're shopping for a Toyota. You know, <laughs> you go to church, go where he's called you. And so that's why we got to be important. Be careful of that because you cannot allow identity politics to run rampant in your life if you're a Christian. Mm -hmm. You cannot demonize any people group because the moment you demonize them, it excludes them from the gospel. Mm -hmm. If rich, wealthy businessmen are the problem in society because they're destroying the environment and they're doing all this kind of stuff, then get they saved. then get them saved. If that's a Preaching genuine, the which really the the honestly the only way that society will actually improve is there's a greater wealth generation and then more people have jobs and and I'm not going to get into a whole sociological thing with that but the point is if there's a problem do your part mm -hmm. don't put blame on other people and don't demonize people groups because of like there's there's some churches that you can go to and you can build a crowd like that if you just start spewing political ideology mm -hmm. And then it completely isolates the other political parties. And then you're not able to reach those people <laughs> yeah. because you put up the, you demonize them so you can't reach them. How can you love them? How, how would you lay down your life for them? You wouldn't because. Amazing at this, sorry. You, <laughs> <laughs> you, you wouldn't be able to. <laughs> Pastor Dennis. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I knew you would. <laughs> I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he does it. But he is very good at that. He will go to the ends of the earth for somebody, believing in them over and over and over again. And now here's the other thing, too. If you're going to go into a business relationship with somebody and they're a uh, liar and a thief, historically, then maybe let some of the past experience, you know, make your expectations of that person sober. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's not that you like isolate them and demonize them and all this stuff and you give up on them, but you're not going to go into business with them until you see like a track record of proof that they've actually started doing well. Mm -hmm. And so th that's a different thing. Those types of relationships are a different thing mm -hmm. because you've got to actually make sure like if you're entrusting a part of something that God's given you and that's why it's important. That's why it amazes with me with Pastor Dennis. He gives people chance after chance, after chance, after chance, after chance, after chance, after chance. Yeah. <laughs> after chance. After chance. <laughs> and then, only then, maybe he'll consider this might not work. <laughs> yeah. And then he starts looking at, okay, we need to do something about the situation here. But that person, let me tell you, the I mean, there's you can read all through the Psalms. The mercy of the Lord endures forever. And we have to model that with people. We have to model that with society. We have to model that with, with people who we're trying to reach. Mm -hmm. and, and when we're growing together, we have to model that. And so we've got to be very aware of that. The way I say that is because it affects your entire worldview. Yeah. It affects your entire worldview. Because if you get drawn into the rest of the world of just <laughs> having this is the good people, these are the bad people, the Bible says there's no one good. No, not one. Mm -hmm. The only reason we have anything to offer anyone is because Jesus died for us and he provided it to us. Mm -hmm. And so that's where humility comes in because then you can only reach those people that you may be zealously against uh, in some form of ideology by having the love of Jesus flowing through you and laying that down. Yeah. Because it's not about us. And then keeping that humble mentality, you know, as we even talked about earlier, I, I heard one pastor say this because it was really good. Because a lot of times, you know, we're, we're very, very quick to judge an individual. We're very, very quick to look at them and be like, oh, I would never do that. I can't believe somebody yeah. would do that. I would never do That's that. True. But he said this one statement that I have not forgotten and I will never forget because it's really good. But, he's, you know, because he, he, he had the same thought about something else that had happened. You know, that same thing, like, I, I can't believe they would even do that. Like, I would never do that, you know, to just just remind yourself, you know, anything is only one decision away. Yeah, and when you have that set before you, it is a very good way to humble yourself. It is a very good way to say, oh, my gosh, it is. It's only one decision, only one decision away. And I could end up just like that individual, just one decision. And when you set that, it, it helps you set guards and boundaries in your own life to protect to say, okay, what can I set up? How can I not do this? How can I avoid doing this? How can I avoid falling into this decision or falling into this temptation? So it'll keep you safe, you know? And that's why God gave Israel 630 laws <laughs> because he knew that the only difference between them and the other nations as to whether or not they would commit atrocity 
is <laughs> if he specifically gave them ways to separate themselves. Mm -hmm. So especially a lot of the ceremonial laws and a lot of the ritual cleanliness. There was a lot of laws like that that was about isolation. It was about keeping Israel as a people group pure until the Messiah could be born. Mm -hmm. And then once Jesus comes on the scene, he's like, everybody, he's like, he's like, go into all the world now, you know, because Israel was, was, it was not about going to all the world. It was about stay, you know, come out from among them and touch not the unclean thing, and I, you know. And so you, you can see that when you realize that you, people, there's, you have this awakening moment almost when you realize that Everyone is not all just basically good and good intentioned. <laughs> Sin runs rampant in the world and in people and the devil works in people and people are capable of anything. Mm -hmm. the, I am not even surprised anymore I know. by the amount of the, people are capable <laughs> of doing anything. anything. And it's important to understand that because it sobers you because you realize people are capable of anything. I'm capable of anything. And so that's why you've got to really identify in your life and this is why community is important because there's weaknesses in your life that you can't identify by yourself mm -hmm. until someone comes around it's like listen you this is a problem <laughs> you know yeah like, like you need to change this. like if someone has a problem with alcohol then don't go to the bar don't hang around people who drink don't do those things and that's why you see this pattern with the biblical laws of this is going to separate you from people who are sinning against god who are committing atrocities who are doing these horrible things because you've got these things in place that will keep you from stumbling. Yeah. And it, the Bible even talks about that with, with helping other people. Is There's a scripture, I can't remember exactly where it's at right now, but it talks about taking heed when you help, like if you're spiritual, restore that person, but take heed that lest you, you also be tempted mm -hmm. and fall into the same thing that they fell in. Mm -hmm. And we got to be very watchful and like, militant against sin in our life <laughs> that we're going to stay separated from from sin and separated to the Lord and now it's a whole lot easier thank God because unlike Israel we have the law written in our hearts by the Holy Ghost <laughs> and we have the grace of God that will will keep us and will lead us in that mm -hmm. and help restore us if we do mess up as long as we repent and come back to God you know and then, you know, going back to, to understanding, doing that and working together and growing together, that's a whole, whole big part of it is, one, we have to be willing to learn and we have to be willing to grow. And then number two, we've got to make sure we give room for other people to grow and give, you know, give, change our expectations and work on changing our expectations, you know, with, with conditioned responses. Here's a good expectation. Don't expect anything from anybody. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's really good. Don't expect anything from anybody. <laughs> <laughs> just God, you know, just look yeah. on God and we're focused on how you can work if on If God yourself. promised it in his word, expect that, mm -hmm. but don't expect anything from anybody. Mm -hmm. And because if, if you lower your standards for it, well, this person never did this and they never did that for me and they never who are you mm -hmm. <laughs> you know why does it matter what have you done for them mm -hmm. and that's another thing that's amazing about uh, the Bible lays out marriage and then you look at marriage today and you see the divorce rates that are just crazy because it's not it's not in a modern world outside of the church it's not covenant yeah it's just the covenant is something I mean we don't even have time to get into covenant what the depths of that of just like Everything I have is yours and everything you have is mine. And we're going to cut covenant that we will lay down our lives for each other. Yeah, and that's what and the that's Bible... that's what marriage is. Yeah, and not only that, but that's what the, the Bible tells us to do for each other. Yeah. Lay down our life for each other. Yeah. Serve each other. Serving each other means taking the lowest position, the position of a servant, yeah. and helping and serving that other individual. But you see, what's so great is when we're all in unity as the body of Christ, we're all totally in love with God. That means everyone is serving everyone. So then everyone's needs, are, and we can see this in Acts, where it talks about everyone's yeah. needs being met. Nobody was went without food. Everybody had a place of housing. Nobody, you know, was, was poor, financially in trouble, because everyone was serving everyone in that body of Christ. 
You know, because when, when we're so focused on ourselves and so focused on these things, we're not looking at how can I help this person? How can I lay out my life for this person? How can I do this? And when we're all on the same page, all doing that, we're all giving what we have of our excess. Because some person might have more of one thing, another person might have more of another thing. But then when they all come together, we all help each other, we all serve each other. You know, then when we, we begin to do that, it helps everybody. It uplifts the entire body of Christ. And then it gets fun. And then it gets exciting. And then it's like, I want to do this more and more and more and more. And it kind of becomes addicting. Because you see, and then when we're serving and when we're laying down our lives and we're giving and sacrificing for other people, you know, God tells us that he will bless us. Whatever we give, he will return. He will give back. He will bless. He will multiply. It. So then when we have that, it just creates this, this continual cycle. That's and when we could do that. And that's that's why it's important. That's why marriage is such an amazing opportunity to put these things into practice. Yeah, <laughs> because, it is a good way to practice. Because nowadays, I mean, I've heard of people getting divorced because, well, we're just, they don't make me happy anymore. Mm-hmm. It's like, boo-hoo. Why don't you <laughs> try making them happy? Yeah, make them happy. <laughs> well, I just don't feel in love anymore, you know? <laughs> and it's all about what can, the, that's, that's what's, what's so awful with relationships right now is if that person stops Doing so, if that person stops supplying for my selfish needs, then fight or flight. Mm-hmm. We're gonna fight, or I'm leaving. You know, <laughs> like it's like it's like we're because it's it's just selfish motiv- motivation, and that's why so many marriages are destroyed because the moment they stop getting what they are selfishly demanding from their spouse, they they flip the switch and they turn off, and they're like, this isn't working. I'm not happy anymore. Marriage is not for happiness. Mm-hmm. If <laughs> you will be happy when you put the Lord first in your marriage, but that doesn't mean you're always, everything's going to be rainbows and butterflies all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so what a, that's just such a, and that's the same, you see that happen in people's relationships. People pattern their relationships. The pattern that they see in marriage is the pattern that they see in friendship. It's the pattern that they see in church. It's the pattern that they see with the Lord. Mm-hmm. And so the moment they stop getting what they're trying to get in marriage and they're not happy, well, there's just, you know, this just isn't working out because I'm not. Marriage isn't for happiness. It's it's to help each other grow and mature and then to eventually provide a suitable, stable household so that children in the next generation can be brought up. Mm-hmm. And you, this is the ultimate goal of the church is to get to the point where it's not about coming to church and this is, you know, the church, I just, I wonder, you know, Pastor Dennis just doesn't seem as anointed today. Like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I'm just not happy here. I'm not this here. Did God plant you here? (laughs) (laughs) Then go through what you're going through, but come out the other side. Mm -hmm. And And, stay faithful and 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 serve. So that we can be like what you're talking about, that model of giving to one another and helping each other and meeting each other's needs so that we can reach the next generation and we can raise up the next generation. Mm -hmm. And that's the model. This is not just about us. Mm-mm. And it's not just about our generation. Because it's so much bigger. Yeah. Like when you realize how big God is, how big his vision is, how big his reach is, how big his power is, and you just limit it to me, yeah. like it's, it's, it can't even touch the, it's like I can't even figure out how to explain it into words how minuscule and how limiting and how like, sad it is because there's so much more that we can have access to and when we stop focusing on just the me and focus on God and focus on others we can begin to walk and experience so much more in our life than we could have even come to possibly imagine or fathom or comprehend and and we'd be looking back on it and say oh my gosh Look what God did. Look what God is doing. And then we have the honor to be able to be a part of it. We have the honor to be able to help him do that. We have the honor to be able to serve each other, to be able to lay down on our life, to be able to say, I'm going to give up everything, 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 everything. Give it all up because what you get in return from God is so much more than anything you could have laid down. Yeah, and that's... Jesus said that. He said, he who seeks to save his life will lose it, Mm -hmm. but he who loses his life for my sake will find it. 
And that's when you find life. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you lose your life for his sake, and it's not, it's not about me anymore, and you're actually coming, seeking him, and you give up your life for him, and you give up your life to serve each other, you give up your life to serve and grow the kingdom, mm -hmm. then you find your life. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. find that God was really just correcting you of everything that you were never created to be in the first place. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's so liberating. Li bringing you, and like you said, liberating you into something even better. Yeah. That's free, that brings joy, that brings peace. Because the Bible tells us He wants us to have fullness of joy. Yeah. That He gives us a peace that surpasses all understanding. That He'll, ha you know, all these fruits, all this stuff, and we can begin to experience that when we, we begin to do these things and learn, you know, and another important thing when it comes to serving one another, helping one another, there's a few things that we need to make sure that we do. You know, one big thing is that we, we have, to, it takes grace and it takes mercy to grow with each other. <laughs> it takes a lot of grace and it takes a lot of mercy, you know. Yeah. And uh, both of us, as, as pastors in, in different areas, we've had to come across different people and, you know, and I know everybody in life, you come across people and some people are harder to deal with than other people. And it's just how it is. But those people, they still need that grace. They still need that mercy that allows us to be able to grow together. Yeah. And, and even in, in, in every relationship, in our own marriage, even leading up to us getting married and everything like that. Who I was then is not who I am today. No, I can I can one hundred percent attest to you. He is I feel like a totally I was going different through person, a like a radical second salvation yeah. experience, y'all. Radical no transformation every one to three months, <laughs> like identity transformation, like going into the deepest depths of who I was, and without grace, imagine like the the we have what what feels to me <laughs> to be the funnest most. We have, there's nobody that knows how to have more fun than we yeah, do together, we, we like honestly, so like we, <laughs> we have so <laughs> like much fun together, we're friends. always laughing together, we're always having fun together, our marriage is incredible. Mm -hmm. But imagine if we had never had that, that grace, imagine if you had never had that grace for the Lord changing me, because sometimes, I mean, it, I'm telling you, it'd be so <laughs> fast, like she'd still be like dealing with expectations of one area that I'm being transformed and I'm already six transformations yeah, down past and I'm and so far from that that it's not even and like, that's where yeah. you know the condition responses because I, I would be expecting him to do different things like here's one example you know he's not like this anymore but here's one example you know for a little while there when we were first married if something happened like bad or something he didn't plan for like his whole day was just <laughs> it was really hard for me to adjust like, and be flexible yeah like it was really hard for him and it, it didn't it could be something really little like it didn't have to be anything really big or such but it was something that just really bothered him and that one thing i mean his whole day was just ruined yeah, and he was just like in a bad day yeah I couldn't get out and of. like nothing was good and everything was just hard and he was just upset for like the whole day so i had that like that preconditioned expectation. So now, that was wasn't of, very long, by the way. No, it wasn't very long. That was long, like but, a handful of times. Yeah, but just, you know, giving us an example, yeah. saying that. But he's right. It wasn't very, because like he said, his trance, like from here to where he is now is very From glory fast. to glory. And, from and you know, if you are in a relationship, pray. <laughs> I promise you the reason he had such quick transformation, number one, because he loved the Lord. Number two, because he's very, very humble. Very, very humble. And number three, he's got a praying wife. Yeah, I would be so angry. <laughs> I'd be like, Victoria, the Lord's just really been dealing with me. Oh, that's great. I've been praying, praying about that. And she was like excited. But because she's so blunt, I'm like, what do you mean you've been praying about? Like, like how is like, she? You know? how, did, how did you know that this was going on in my life? I didn't even know this was going on in my life. You know? Yeah, cause I, and I didn't have to say anything to him <laughs> yeah, about it. I didn't go and pray. nag him about it. I didn't go and be like, hang, 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 hang. You know, like that. I just, I just took it to prayer and just prayed. Ladies, <laughs> listen, if you're in relationship, pray for your husbands. Don't nag them. Don't go and say, well, you need to do this. You should do this. Or I can't believe you're not doing this and on them 24 seven. Take all of that frustration, go to the prayer closet, give it to God and then pray and start saying, thank you, God, that my husband will be like this, that he will do this, that he will do this. And I promise you, if you continue with that, you will see a change in his life. He might come to you one day out of the blue and just be like, like, you know, I just, I just feel like I need to start doing it. Like, I'm just going to start washing the dishes every night. I don't know why. I just, I just see all that you're doing and I just want to help. And I'm just going to start washing the dishes every night. Like, I'm telling you, just pray. I mean, it works. It could be anything like that. Anything yeah. 
because because it's a it's a team effort. It is. You know, <laughs> getting the responsibilities done, doing the things we need to do, and helping each other grow. And there's certain things that I really think it's just amazing to me why people. Here's a mistake that people make: is they despise marriage mm -hmm. because they've had bad experiences. That's that's a terrible mistake because it's such an amazing way to grow into what God has for you. Mm -hmm. And so now, if you're dating someone and they're a bum and there's no evidence of change and it's been eight months and they've never changed at all and they're like they're not going to change like first of all why you've been in the relationship for eight months with them like okay yeah now when you're married that's another story it's like whatever you didn't know or whatever you signed up for you better suck it up <laughs> and take that thing to prayer and deal with it in prayer because you know, there's nothing you can do about it now. You made the commitment. You've got to deal with it. Now. Yeah. Now, the only exception for that is like abusive relationships. Yeah, that's a different you know? thing. So yeah. like if they're physically abusive and that yeah. kind of stuff, don't don't stay in that. Like that's totally different. But if it's something else that just annoys you or something yeah. else that's like, oh, this is hard, work through it. And the reason why we've always grown through stuff like that, and, and we'll start wrapping up yeah, here soon. But the reason we've always grown through stuff like that is because the first thing we do is we go to prayer and we both, Lord, if it's something with me, mm -hmm. deal with me. And people should do this with everything in life, mm -hmm. in work, business, marriage relationships, friendships, family relationships, and church. church. If there's an issue, go to God first and Lord, is this me? What's going on with me? What do I need to change? What do I need to correct? What do I need to do in this situation? And be humble enough that when he actually gives you correction and you weren't expecting it, <laughs> <You> <laughs> to like receive it. We're like, oh, or, this whole thing's my fault actually. <laughs> you or know? if you or just need like to that. forgive. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't your fault, but you, you're holding resentment and you need to forgive. You know, like we talked about earlier, offense is the biggest stumbling block that ruins any relationship is offense. And we've, you know, we've got to make sure we do that. So we got to forgive each other. We've got to encourage each other. Yeah. Uh, another important thing too is open communication because yeah. a lot of issues in any type of relationship we'll see this in church church all the time somebody gets mad at something or another they get offended and they leave and they never come back and nobody even knows what well, they I shouldn't out have of. to tell you this <laughs> like, <laughs> and that you see that in marriage too you see stereotypically in movies like I said relationship patterns are patterned through all your relationships so mm -hmm. marriage is a good example for that even the Lord used marriage as an example for Christ in the church yeah and so you see that in marriage relationships is is people people pattern that where they just like I shouldn't have to tell you that this is a problem like you should just know or yeah, like you if you're mad yeah. and your spouse comes or your, your friend oh, whoever's you don't like, know? <laughs> like why don't you know it's wrong you yeah. should know this like you should and then you just like give them the silence treatment yeah. for eight days like what are they supposed they have no idea that's why they asked you like if somebody's gonna come and ask you hey what did i do wrong or why did i upset you be open you know have open communication open healthy communication like over caleb and I, yeah over communicate caleb's really good at that <laughs> <laughs> which i'm very thankful for because sometimes you know sometimes um either i'm i don't want to talk about it or sometimes we have oh and making sure uh, communication too is important because sometimes they can say something and we don't understand or it comes across different than what they're actually meaning it's not just what, what you say it's what they hear yeah because they can say something yeah. and I can hear something totally different and then Here's 40 minutes later you're arguing you realize we're actually saying the same, same thing, thing. <laughs> just, we just didn't we just yeah. understood it differently <laughs> like one example is Caleb when I cook Oh yeah, because <laughs> he'll ask me, well, what are you making for dinner or what are you making? And I'm like, oh, I'm making chin chicken. He, he goes, well, what are you doing with the chicken? And I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to bake the chicken. I'm baking the chicken. And then he'll ask me a little bit later on the day. Well, what are you doing with the chicken? And I'm like, I already told you I'm baking <laughs> yeah. the chicken. This I'm is a real take example. This happened. Yeah. yeah I'm, I said, I'm going <laughs> to take the chicken and I'm going to bake it. And, you know, like, t you know, a little bit later in the day, maybe at, at the end of work, he comes back. He says, oh, yeah, Victoria, what are you doing with the chicken tonight for dinner? I said, I told you four <laughs> times today, I bake it the chicken. And, yeah, and then I'm like, oh, no, what are you making with the chicken is what I'm <laughs> like, saying. Like sides. And I'd be like. Which is why I'm improving my grammar. And now. I'm like, oh, you know, like I'm going to make green beans or this or potatoes. <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
Because <laughs> people Sorry. have different pasts <laughs> and they're raised Why in different families talking? and different cultures. <laughs> and so the way you may communicate one thing to somebody has a different meaning. Mm -hmm. And you have to really be clear and communicate through that. And work through that because you could very well be on the exact same page in total agreement, but have no idea <laughs> because how they said something or you heard something differently. So then you've got to make sure you communicate it through properly so you're on the same page yeah, and especially as leaders in a, in a church it's important if you're especially if you're leading a connect group to communicate through the obstacles that you're going through in your or what if it's a connect group or ministry group or whatever because i'm sure there's going to be connect group leaders that will have a 40 minute argument and come to the end of it and realize oh we're actually saying the same thing <laughs> 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 even yeah. realize and it. it's important yeah. and that's why you have to like we talked about with everything have mercy have grace listen mm -hmm. which we're not even going to get into that because no, we'll be in here for another some people listen minutes. to respond not to actually listen, listen to hear what the other person is saying and understand yeah you know but those are all good things and why it's so important that we can grow together because the whole purpose of doing that growing together you know being humble allowing god to work inside of you allowing yourself to grow and giving room for people in your family and your church and relationships to grow so that we can all walk and become the fullness of christ exactly i was just gonna read that and i was probably gonna try and wrap that up up in uh in scripture here <clears throat> in ephesians chapter 3 talking about in verse 17 that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. <laughs> and then it says over in the next chapter you can see the goal is for us to be filled with all the fullness of God but then you look in Ephesians and you read in verse 11 and in 411 and it talks about um the fivefold ministry is for the perfecting of the saints the work of the ministry and the edifying of the body of christ till we all come in the unity of faith and the knowledge of the son of god unto a perfect man unto the measure and the stature of the fullness of christ mm -hmm. which tells me two things we will always have a job <laughs> because there's always there's always growth there's even well, even, even in, us, in us we're I'm always growing we're grow. always learning we're always but what that also tells me is that the lord really wants us in unity yeah he wants us in unity and i think that we need to do some more podcasts like this eventually i think this has been I a lot so of fun. Much fun i hope you guys have enjoyed this today uh this has been like a special deviation from our typical uh you know more or less 20 minute podcast that we've yeah, been doing yeah and if you week. did enjoy it special put 100th a comment episode, in there yeah. and let us know you know like hey say this was a blessing or hey i hey i enjoy it you know even if it's a longer one i enjoy this as well so we can kind of mix in a few things so we want to see where you guys are at too. yeah and share it with with people and and yeah help us Help us get it out there. I'm excited. We've been doing this now for, I don't even know how long we've been doing it, but I know we've been doing it for 100 episodes. Yeah. <laughs> I should have went and checked the date of our first See when we started. To see when we started, yeah. But it's been exciting. And it's been, it's been cool to see because even if you look at the stats of our YouTube page, the analytics are just steadily growing. And we're reaching people who aren't even part of the church. Mm -hmm. Like there's analytics of so, showing how uh, people who have just found us organically through searching questions on the internet and it's ex it's just exciting it's just it exciting is. to be doing this and uh i i hope that y'all are getting as much out of these podcasts that we get out of them when we do them each week and uh yeah yeah so again thank you guys so much for watching you know i hope you enjoyed this broadcast and god bless